Welcome to the 2022 Crossing Bible College commencement. Today we gather to honor those who have exerted great effort to add to their knowledge of God's word and how to apply these precepts to their lives. The college offers certificate programs, associate degrees, and bachelor degrees upon successful completion of the requirements for each. Many of our faculty join me today on this stage to celebrate the accomplishments of these students. Please join me in a prayer as we dedicate this time to the Lord. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that we get to celebrate and honor the students, Lord, that have put forth so much effort, Lord, to, to get to know you better, Lord. Lord, they desire more of you each and every day. Lord, thank you for their families. Thank you for everyone, Lord, in their lives that have urged them on, Lord, to, to keep on going, Lord, when the going got tough. Lord, we just submit ourselves to you right now. We give you this time, Lord, to you be the glory, the honor, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may all be seated. Students, you look amazing. Please allow me to welcome to the stage, or not to the stage, he's already here. Welcome to the mic, Dr. Curtis Boozer to give the commencement address. Well, today's a pretty amazing day. I hope you guys feel the same way. I know when I uh, was visiting with our graduates today, it's a lot of fun to reflect on uh, all the conversations we've had. And many of those, uh, since our school is online, they were times when we weren't facing each other, but I got to hear their heart and see them as they were delving into scripture and, and finding truth there that, that really illuminated their lives. It's so much fun to get to be a part of that. And so for me, today is an amazing celebration of uh, the hard work that you guys have put forward. And I know I can speak for the faculty here to say it is just such a blessing to us to get to serve you and uh, to see this happening in your life. Um, it, it just is so rich for us. So, so you're, you guys are amazing. One of the things I would also say is what you did here, you didn't do alone. Um, I want to take a moment to thank the families and the friends who surround you, who supported you and took time or allowed you to take time away from other things to focus on your studies. Uh, rarely does a person achieve such things alone, and it is good for us to strive together as family and friends. So please join me in celebrating our family and friends. Great job, family. Uh, so. Our lead pastor, um, Greg Dumas, and the elders of the Crossing Church chose to establish the Crossing Bible College so that we could equip men and women with biblical knowledge and practical skills in order to be kingdom-minded servants of God. That's kind of our mission statement. And so the courses were designed to prepare our students to be ready to do ministry in an effective manner within their homes, their church, their community, and around the world. And I'm so very proud of all of them, as I've already said. And um, 
I want to just share some personal reflections I have. Um, a few years ago, I began a personal quest to understand discipleship. And I had grown up in the church and was familiar with the term discipleship, but it seemed to have a different definition to each person I spoke to. And my curiosity led me to pursue a doctorate to study what it means to be a disciple. And my studies led me to something in scripture that had always been there, but that I had not connected to in a meaningful way. And I wanna take a moment to explain these findings to you and relate them to what our students have been working to achieve. Uh, I believe that there are three key concepts uh, to know to be a successful disciple and ultimately a disciple maker. Those concepts are devotion, family, and purpose. So let's talk about devotion. In Matthew 22, verses 34 to 40, Jesus was talking with the religious leaders of his day. And these leaders were attempting to catch Jesus saying something so that they could arrest him. However, Jesus was more than a match for them. And he, they asked him, teacher, which command in the law is the greatest? And Jesus replied by quoting from Deuteronomy 6. Uh, this passage is referred to as the Shema, which is a prayer that devoted Jews pray every morning and evening. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes and you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. This passage highlights the high value of knowing God, learning more about God, and being devoted to God. I contend that there is no higher calling in our lives than to live in relationship with God. He created us for it, he tells us to do it, and he makes himself available to us to have a personal relationship with him. And you can see how Jesus was reminding us that God deserves our utmost devotion and focus. Our devotion to him is demonstrated when we spend time with him and spend time studying to understand more about him. So let's talk about family. In the same conversation with the religious leaders, Jesus said something pretty profound about sharing the first command for devotion to God, or after sharing that. In Matthew 22, 39 through 40, he said, the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets depend on these two commands. Now this love that Jesus was speaking about places a priority on the relationships we have in our lives. The importance of loving others is highlighted as he says that everything in scripture depends upon this love. Jesus invited people to become part of his divine family. Um, scripture describes how that by accepting Jesus as Lord, we become joint heirs in the kingdom of God. We become family. And as we look into Jesus' words, we can see that he meant for his followers to view each other as family and to prioritize those relationships over natural-born families. Now, this was a radical thought in their time, and it's pretty disconcerting for now. Um, in those days, belonging in a family was vitally important to each person and defined them in many ways. In their culture, they were taught to be devoted to family members and to always work to bless the family. Um, and they were supposed to do it over focusing on themselves. It was always supposed to be about enhancing the family. And their sense of honor demanded devotion to the family. This contrasts with a modern focus on the individual rather than on their family. It's somewhat unusual to see close-knit families, family groups in our society today. Families are often fragmented all over the country due to work requirements um, of the individuals. And so as we pursue being disciples, our love for one another and others brings honor to our heaven-bound family. Our ability to prioritize each other 
and serve each other encourages others to accept the invitation to become part of the heaven-bound family, as I'm calling it. Throughout scripture, we can see the encouragement to be unified, to be like a close family, and to serve our God together. As disciples, we will need to develop a love for those around us, as this is our greatest tool as disciple makers. When we demonstrate selfless love for others, they respond by becoming open to our words. They naturally come to respect us because we prove our concern for them and our actions communicate that we want what is best for them. So the third concept is purpose. As a young believer, I ask myself, so what is this all about? What am I supposed to do? And Jesus gave us our purpose very clearly in Matthew 28, 19 to 20, where Jesus said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This has been called the Great Commission, and I tag on two disciples. Um, I want you, I want to share with you that this passage is one of the places where the King James translation did not serve us well. The Greek was translated to put an imperative on go when it should, would have been more appropriate to translate go to be as you go. And the imperative should correctly be on make disciples rather than on go. So I believe this passage could be understood to be as you go, make disciples of all nations. I contend that our purpose as disciples is to make disciples where we are with the people we know. And we, as we make disciples and minister to them, they will make disciples and so on and so on. Before we know it, we will reach our region and beyond. And I assert that all of us are called to be disciple makers wherever we are according to this great commission. Another significant concept in this passage is the idea that we are to teach them to obey all of Jesus' commands. And if any of you have taught children or adults new ideas, you can appreciate that it is very difficult to have someone place such importance on new ideas, they actually put those concepts into practice. This word obey, for instance, is exceptionally challenging. And as disciple makers, we should be able to explain to others what we have learned about God. I feel it's important that I share with you that providing good information to others will not be sufficient to see them obey. To see them accept this information as truth, they need to see us obeying the commands Jesus has given. Our actions are what support the truth that we share with them, and they will quickly discount our words if they see we do not actually believe them enough to live by the concepts that Jesus has given to us. So you might be wondering, why have I spent time describing discipleship concepts to you as we celebrate our students' accomplishments? You see, these students have engaged in the process to prepare themselves to be disciple makers. Their desire to study more about God aligns with the encouragement in the Shema. Their studies provide them perspective and information to share their faith with others in relational ways that show respect to others while conveying key truths. They have been challenged by their teachers and the authors whose books they read to be diligent in serving others, loving others, and sharing their faith with others. And I wanted to share what I've learned about discipleship with you and invite any of you who might be interested in developing further as a disciple to join us in the Bible college. I can understand that it might be a challenge in our busy lives to fit another thing in, and I'm sure many of you remember the hard work you, you have exerted to develop your skills in the marketplace to be able to excel in your vocations. And I would contend developing as a disciple is a key life skill. I believe that the college can help empower your growth as a disciple, and I encourage you to consider investing your time in the disciple growth process as these students have done. So now allow me to recap what our students learn in their, studi or their studies at the Crossing Bible College. They study theology where they learn that God reveals himself generally to everyone 
and specifically to each one of us as believers. They learn more about him, his character, and his attributes. They learn about the Trinity and can describe the three persons of the Trinity to anyone that asks. They see how important mankind is to God and the lengths he has gone to reach us and maintain a relationship with us. They learn there is only one creator and learn of his creation and his created ones. They read how some of the created angels rebelled and became demons who seek to destroy us because God loves us. They study church history to understand how we got different forms of religion and Christianity and the mistakes that were made before that we should recognize and work to avoid ourselves. In that study of history, they see the heresies that arose and how people corrected those heretical ideas by diligently studying God's word and seeking guidance from the Holy Spirit. They review other religions and see a bit of how they came to their beliefs and other gods or no God at all. They gain perspective that people have been misled by what seem to be crazy ideas to Christians, yet people commit their lives and their eternal future to these ideas. They study biblical counseling and marriage counseling to learn how to speak life into other people's lives when they are hurting. They also learn how to speak to themselves when they experience tough times. Spiritual transformation courses address the, their identity in Christ and what it means to live a spirit-filled life and how to engage the Great Commission by having a lifestyle of evangelism and discipleship. They learn how to put into effect spiritual disciplines in their lives, and they learn how to study God's word using hard-won skills to exegete the scriptures and understand the, the content as well as the context of what is presented there. And they learn to manage the resources God has placed in their hands to have impact in his kingdom. They understand the God-given authority we have as a child of God to speak against the enemies in the spiritual realm and learn how to become free from sin, to remove burdens that have attached to them, and to minister to others to find that same kind of spiritual freedom. They study various forms of apologetics, and these courses help them to consider how Scripture has answered and continues to answer the arguments of skeptics against the truth of God's word. They consider the concepts of biblical ethics and reconcile what God's word states that is in direct conflict with man's conventional wisdom. They consider how to apply God's principles to their lives and write those thoughts in discussion boards they share with other students. Our hope was that they would become comfortable with having dialogues about what God has asked of us and learn how to explain to others the ways to apply those commands to their lives. And it is likely some of their classmates uh, expose ideas that they might not have considered and find their explanations valuable. That's a lot, isn't it? They, they've been really considering many, many things, and, uh, and I commend them for that. So at this point, I want to speak specif specifically to our graduates. Um, I earnestly hope that you have recognized that you are a child of God and part of his royal priesthood. As priests for God, you have a God-given purpose to minister to those around you. The spoken word of God is powerful and can bless many when we explain God's word to them. We encourage you to use this voice that you have developed in your studies to instruct and encourage others. They desperately need God's wisdom. You have prepared your mind and your heart for ministry through your studies, and now is the time to listen closely to God and put into practice all that you have learned. What I share next is not an important thing to know. It is the most important thing to know as a minister for God. As scripture tells us in John 15, verses 4 and 5, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. 
And as a priest for God, you can do nothing without him. Now, don't misunderstand me. You can do a lot of things. But um, even if everyone knows your name, you will not have the blessing of God upon your words when you try to do it on your own. You need him to be indwelling you and filling you with power and direction. Um, I don't particularly like math concepts much, but I was always impressed with the idea of proofs. And you might remember that they always had a pattern of if-then. And this passage is a perfect if-then statement. If you abide in him and he in you, then you will bear much fruit. Do you hear how directly the Lord is speaking here? If you abide in him, then fruit. Allow him to lead you and indwell you, and then you can do great, or he can do great things through you. And I tell you, this is where the Holy Spirit's power becomes manifest. So I've been speaking to you about being a minister for God. Just to clarify, I am not talking about all of you becoming engaged in full-time ministry as your vocation. I'm talking about you doing ministry as you go. And he might need you to go into the marketplace to, and do ministry to those you do life with every day. It might be that you have a lifetime of work to do just to reach your family and friends that are already in your life. And I contend that being a relational minister is truly being on the front lines of the spiritual battle we are all engaged in. So I've shared three concepts, key concepts about discipleship as I talk today. One, embrace the ideas conveyed in the Shema. There's one God. He deserves our devotion. Study his word constantly and share it constantly with others. Two, the new commandment that adds the idea that we should love others as we love ourselves. We should embrace biblical family and invoke, devote ourselves to them. And then finally, the Great Commission. This commandment encourages us to make disciples as we go and to teach them to obey Jesus' commandments. Knowledge is sadly not enough for us to be great disciples. Jesus reminds us in John 14, if you love me, you will keep my word. Actively loving others, inviting them to God's family, teaching them God's word and helping them become disciples is how we demonstrate our devotion to God. Jesus continues in John 14 by saying, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. My father will love him. We will love, we will come to him and make our home with him. That is a promise from Jesus to you as his joint heir in the kingdom of God. You are not alone in ministry. You are part of a heavenly family. You are beloved. So I'm so very proud of you and am excited to see how God uses you as you make a difference in other people's lives. At Crossing graduates, may God's blessing be upon you and your ministry. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Curtis Boozer. Would those who have completed the requirements for the certificate program please approach the stage? As they make their way up, the certificate program allows a student to engage in the same studies as the degree programs. These certificates are awarded upon the successful completion of 10 courses. First, Certificate in Theology, Cody Adams. <laughs> Harold Langston. At this time, will the candidates for the Associates of Theology degree please approach the stage. The Associates of Theology degree is awarded for the successful completion of 20 prescribed courses.
Our first recipient, Ms. Jocelyn Buckner. Carlos David Lopez. <laughs> and last, Yanni Ruiz. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Theology degree please approach the stage? I, like I said, theological studies. <laughs> First recipient, Joshua Michael Carday. Kathy Garcia. <laughs> Mary Sonley Tavera. And our last recipient, Jay Towns. And now, will the candidates for the Bachelor of Theology degree please approach the stage. The Bachelor of Theology degree is awarded to those who have completed 40 prescribed courses. Our first recipient, Lainey Dumas. Pastor Carlos Enrique Lopez. <laughs> and lastly, Alejandro Pose. We have to pose for processing. Pause, I mean, for just a moment.
So students, would y'all please rise? So it is my great honor and privilege to announce your completion of your degrees and please move your tassels from the right side to the left to signify your accomplishment. Well done. Pastor Wade, would you mind coming and giving us a closing benediction, please? I'm not going to lie. I had nothing prepared for this part. I'm just keeping it real. And uh, what the Lord reminded me in that is because just a few years ago when I received my degree, and as, as many of you know who've been through any of my, my classes, you know, Son Lee and, and uh, Carlos, I know you guys and Jocelyn, you have been. Um, I'm, st I'm continuing to pursue education, as many of us are. We're, we're lifelong learners. And, and I, just, I just remembered the Holy Spirit is with me. Okay? So it's, yes, it's an accomplishment. Yes, you have a, a piece of paper that says you have a, a degree or a certificate. But it's not something that you have to perform and apply and seek as you go out there. Because the Holy Spirit of God is in each and every one of you. Amen? He is going to bring to remembrance all that you've learned, all the, the counsel and the wisdom and everything that you've received. He's going to give it to you exactly when you need it. It doesn't need to be forced. It's not something for you to work for and, not, and to, to achieve. The Holy Spirit of God is in each and every one of you. Just remember that going forward. If you guys would, just please extend your hands as we pray and charge this, this class moving forward. Father, we thank you. God, we thank you for your word. Lord, that it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Lord, that it just cuts between the bone and the marrow. Lord, we thank you that you are faithful. We thank you, Lord, that your word does not return void. It will complete what you said. So, Lord, as these students move forth, as they take your word, as they continue to abide in you, just as Pastor Curtis said, Lord, and you abide in them, Lord, that they would bear light in dark places. Lord, whether that be their homes, their neighborhoods, their workplaces, wherever you send them, Father, may they be light bearers and may the darkness be expelled. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you lead, that you guide, that you comfort, that you counsel, that you lead us in all truth. May we not strive to perform for you, God, but may we just love you and love you and love you so deeply. Mm, Jesus. Lord, thank you that the great co-mission, it is a mission, but it's a co-mission. Lord, you are with us to the end of the days. You are with us always. Be with them as they go forth. May they hear you clearly. May they see you move in mighty ways in their lives. And Lord, may they have a heart to serve you all the days of their lives. Lord, your word says, submit to you. Resist the devil and he must flee. I pray they would remember that moving forward. That your Holy Spirit leads and guides and the enemy has no power. He has no authority. We simply speak the name of Jesus. <laughs> so, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for their accomplishments. We thank you, Lord, for the, the field, the mission field, Lord, that you're sending them out to. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We give you all the glory and the honor. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in celebrating our 2022 graduates one more time. We want to thank you for joining us today. We have refreshments in the lobby, and you are welcome to enjoy those. This commencement is complete. God bless you, and have a great week.